I'm Jennifer Stern and I'm at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. So I'm a planetary geochemist and I work on a broad range of things, but primarily right now I'm interested in Mars and the cycling or not cycling of nitrogen on Mars. And as part of that, uh, I work on the sample analysis at Mars instrument suite on the Mars Science Laboratory rover, Curiosity. My primary work is to look for the chemical and isotopic signatures of life elsewhere, be that Mars or even icy worlds like Europa. When we think about life, possibility of life on Mars or any other planet, we think about, you know, if you landed in the middle of Antarctica or some very, some very place here that's devoid of life, would you just immediately assume, just because you don't see life right there on the surface, that there isn't life there at all? Probably not. You really want to do a thorough search um, for life. And we're still discovering on Earth new habitats that life has exploited and, and sort of branched out into. I get excited about the fact that we have not seen anything of the subsurface of Mars. So we know something about the surface and we've imaged it and mapped it, but we know nothing below a couple of centimeters. And so um, we don't know anything about the geothermal gradient. We don't know anything about whether there are nutrients there and whether there might be some sort of habitat for life there. And um, I'm excited because some of the upcoming Mars missions may at least start to answer some of those questions. Working where I do at NASA Goddard, we have a lot of chemists, a lot of geologists, um, and a lot of people who do a lot of laboratory experiments. Um, but coming here to this sort of workshop, uh, I talk to more biologists and more people who are looking at um, how biology is expressing itself in the fossil record. And so the, the good thing about that is that we all do speak the same language in some ways as scientists. Um, sometimes you have to sort of step back and explain from the top down and, and um, you should be able to do that as a scientist. You should be able to communicate to any level. The challenges for somebody in my position where I work on missions and trying to develop instrumentation is working with engineers. And they speak a slightly, or maybe not so slightly, different language than scientists at times. The scientist um, thinks big and wants to build something that can do new things. The engineer wants to use something that um, has heritage, that is proven to work. It's kind of a little bit of a, a culture shock at first, but it's really helpful. Um, at Goddard, we work very closely. We're actually co-located with the engineers who are working on the mission. So we're in the same hallway, same, you know, past people in, in, in offices. And so that, I think that helps a lot. Being at LC has been amazing because, I mean, even just the very first day, I met a master's student who told me that she had read my paper about nitrogen and, and was doing photochemistry experiments to try to understand how nitrate is formed on Mars. She showed me her results and I just, this is so awesome. That was really exciting, and then there were a couple of presentations um, from folks from LC that were that were really neat that I may not have seen had I not come to a workshop like this, which is interdisciplinary and bringing people together.